Tonight we're going to be considering the word grant. <clears throat> Concerning the use of words and language, you may know the Jews had their own language. You actually don't hear much made of this today. I'm kind of uh, kind of astounded by this. There's a lot of a lot of talk about the Greek language, but that wasn't the Jews' language. Mm -hmm. That was a second language. That wasn't their first language. They did have their own language, and their enemies couldn't understand it. There's an example of this found in Second Kings 18:26. And here's a word spoken to Rabshakeh, which was an Assyrian enemy of Israel. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna, and Joah, unto Rabshakeh, Speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language, so we can understand it. And talk not with us in the Jews' language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. This was a Nehemiah's wall. <laughs> Don't speak to us in the Jews' language. We, we don't understand it. Now, I do understand that that sort of conflicts with some people's idea about speaking, but mm -hmm. that's the way it was in those days. Jews had a language people couldn't understand it that weren't Jews. Mm -hmm. In fact, when the Jews deteriorated, their language was one of the first things that showed the fact of deterioration. Mm -hmm. They got to the point they couldn't speak the Jews' language. Mm -hmm. That is the language that the people could understand. Mm -hmm. I'm not, uh, at this point, I'm not going to enter into the various translation controversy and all this, although I do have considerable to say about this, and I think I could very well buttress what I said. But there was a time in our history when everybody pretty well knew Bible talk. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it's not that way now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not that way now. There's hardly any two bodies of people that understand the Bible, just what it says mm -hmm. alike. Yeah. Hmm? I'm going to give you an example of how this affected a man of God. This is found in Nehemiah 13, 24, and 25. It's after the Babylonian captivity. One of the things that happened in the Babylonian captivity is the Jews' language became watered down, and some of them couldn't speak it anymore. And their children spake half, you see, in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, mm -hmm. but according to the language of each people. Well, it's just like you're talking about today. Mm -hmm. And I contended with them, and cursed them, and smote certain of them, and plucked off their hair, mm -hmm. and made them swear to God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto your sons, and take your daughters into your, their daughters into your sons for yourselves. See, this is a result of mingling. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing today. You can say whatever you want to say mm -hmm. about the language being neutralized and the need to understand the Bible plainly. Say, after, after all said and done, someone's been mixing with the enemy. Yeah. That's, right. yeah. Amen. That's why this happened. Mm -hmm. See? Showing you the language is an important thing. One more text on this. This has to do, Paul made a point of this the kind of words that people used. 1 Corinthians 2.13, he said, When we speak, which we speak not in words that man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You must say words. Some versions say words. Spirit, we talk about spiritual things as spiritual words. That is, there's a certain vocabulary. It's, now, we're not down into the is and in and the and the. We're not talking about that sort of thing. We're talking about there are certain key pivotal words mm -hmm. yeah. that if you don't understand them, you, you can't grasp what God is saying. Mm -hmm. This language is developed under the law. It was developed in the tabernacle service. There are certain, certain ways of saying things. Sacrifice, justification, offering, sanctification, cleansing. See, mm -hmm. these were key words. And... Uh, Paul said, we speak in those kind of words. If the Greeks think we're not very smart, that doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. They spoke in, you might say, the Jews' language. Mm -hmm. So having said that, let's get to this word, grant. It is a word that they have not been able to come up with a substitute. Most versions do use the word grant, which is the interesting. Whenever you find a 
consistency. It's kind of interesting to find it, but this is this is one of those words. Grant the God of peace would grant. He would grant you to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. And he would grant. You to be strengthened by might by a spirit in the inner man. Mm -hmm. This isn't automatic then. Right. Amen. This isn't something that just happens. In our quest to uh, identify what happens in spiritual life, it's just important to know it. It just, just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I know when you plant a seed, it grows. That's just kind of the natural way. But it's not that simple in Christ Jesus. Because we've been planted in a kind of hostile soil. Mm -hmm. So there's a God's got a grant, whatever grant means, you got to get this grant, grant you yeah, right. to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So let's first define the word, what does this mean, grant? And there's a lot of different words that's used for this in scripture, it's kind of interesting. In the Old Covenant scriptures, there's at least four Hebrew words for grant. One means to give. Or to bestow, I'm going to take it from me. Bestow means I'm going to take it from me and give it to you. That's bestow. And entrust. That means I'm putting, I'm just not giving this to you. I'm giving this to you to take care of. See, mm -hmm. that's, that's a concept. And to give over to, which is more or less the same idea. I'm going to take it from me, give it to you to take care of and do something with it. Mm -hmm. That's one meaning. Another is to look at it from the subjective point of view, from the receiver's point of view, to come upon or come to pass or to attain. Something comes to you and you didn't have by nature. Now you've got it. You didn't develop it. You didn't grow it. <laughs> you didn't make it. It came to you from someplace else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another word means it's a permit or permission. In other words, there's some kind of authority to get a grant. It's got to be okayed from heaven. You can't just operate independently of heaven. Mm -hmm. You have to be given permission Amen. to do it and the right to have it. Mm -hmm. This is why you know this is why you should be holy. Because if you're not holy, you don't have a right. <laughs> you don't have a right to ask God for anything. You don't. Mm -hmm. Unless it's remission or yeah. forgiveness. Right. See? Grant involves that. And the grant also is means to produce or act with effect that God causes it something to happen. That's a, it causes it to happen to you personally. So that's, that's some different nuances of the word grant in the Old Covenant Scriptures. To give or bestow, entrust to, hand over to, to permit or give permission, authorize it, to uh, produce or cause an effect on the people. In the New Covenant Scriptures, there's, a, there's a three words for it. One is to command, to grant. Like I'm going to picture God as having authority. He says, you can have it. Mm -hmm. This is for you. See, he commands it to happen to you. He commands it to happen to you. Mm -hmm. Like he said, let there be light. That sort of thing. Another word means to 